Welcome to the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones, and I'm so excited that you're here. The Plan B CRNA podcast is the only show made specifically for nurse anesthetists who are exploring options outside of their traditional career paths. This is the place to expand your mind and your goals as we uncover new ways to produce side income together. The mindset that we bring to any situation plays a key part in overcoming challenges and really enjoying our unique paths in life. On Thoughtful Thursdays, I like to explore emotional topics that are relevant to CRNAs and other providers. I think of this as my therapy, and I hope you learn some tips and tricks that you can use along your own journey. This episode is brought to you by On Call Capital. On Call Capital is dedicated to educating CRNAs and other healthcare providers about investing outside of the traditional stock market. On Call Capital also provides opportunities for you, yes, you, to create passive income and generational wealth while also lowering your taxable income through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure you do that right now so that you don't miss an episode. Thanks so much for joining me today. And now on with the show. Welcome to Thoughtful Thursdays on the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones. And as always, I like to start these episodes off with a quote that gets me thinking. Valentino Crawford once said, you cannot change what you don't manage and you can't manage what you don't track. Now, I know that a new year often comes with new goals, whether we want to lose weight, quit smoking, change your diet, read more books, exercise more, or accomplish some kind of a business milestone. We've all heard that tracking progress along the way to our goals is important. But how true is that mantra? Well, it turns out that it's no myth. In 2015, Dr. Benjamin Harkin and his colleagues conducted a meta-analysis of 138 studies with 19,951 participants that looked at the effectiveness of an intervention or treatment designed to prompt participants to monitor their goal progress. The studies focused primarily on personal health goals, like those I just mentioned, and they found that increasing progress monitoring has a robust effect on goal attainment, and it constitutes a key component of effective self-regulation. Now, I'd love to give you some specific percentages here, but this meta-analysis used a lot, and I mean a lot, of advanced statistics, which made my eyes go numb. So I've attached the research article for you to peruse at your own leisure. And an interesting takeaway uh, is that they also found that the more frequent the monitoring, the greater chance of success. They also revealed that monitoring progress has an even greater effect if the information was physically recorded or publicly reported. For instance, folks who are in weight loss groups where they regularly weigh themselves in front of others have a greater chance of hitting their goals. Of course, they admitted that some monitoring methods are more effective than others and that a lot more research is needed, but these results remain pretty significant. And there are other studies that are out there for businesses. In 2016, a study by CensusWide and Gecko Board looked at over 250 small to medium-sized businesses in the U.S. and found that tracking metrics led to nearly twice as much success in goal attainment. Not only that, but the businesses that set goals and track their progress grow roughly 30% faster than those that don't. Pretty astounding, right? So what does that mean for you? Well, it seems to me that if you have goals for the new year, you might want to start tracking your progress, like pronto. So here are some tips I have for you to ultimately achieve your goals. Number one, be specific with your goals and the plan to get there. Let's say that you want to lose 30 pounds this year. Great. But how do you actually plan to accomplish that? Is it diet? Is it exercise? Or a combination of both? The more specific you can get with your workout and meal plans, the easier it is to track your progress and make adjustments along the way. Number two, start small. Many people want to create new habits to start the year, but they want to try to do everything at once. Starting with one core habit that you want to shift can help you to to sharpen your focus a bit. You don't have to go big or go home here. It takes anywhere from three weeks to three months to establish a new routine. So let's say that you want to change your diet by eating a salad every day. You will eventually get to a point in the process where it becomes routine and automatic, and it would be weirder to actually skip a day than to just eat the salad. And the cool thing here is that it can overflow into other areas of your life. Let's stick with the salad example. 
you're, you're eating salads now and you feel pretty good. So you decide to start cutting back on your other portion sizes at other meal times. You do that for a while and then you think, wow, man, maybe I should drink more water. I should start hydrating better. So you start doing that. And then you have more energy now. You're feeling better. So you think, I should start working out. Then it can snowball into cutting back on your alcohol consumption, getting more sleep, et cetera, et cetera. Success is a powerful motivator to continue making changes in your life. And number three, chart your progress. Of course, Fitbits and Apple Watches are popular and have a ton of different functions to track your sleep or steps or nearly whatever you want. There are plenty of apps and trackers out there to help you, and I have included some of those links uh, in the show notes. But you can take Jerry Seinfeld's advice here and just keep it old school. He was advising a young comic on how to be successful, and he said that to become a better comic, you had to create better jokes. And the way to do this was to write every day. So he got himself a big wall calendar with a whole year on one page and a big red magic marker. For each day that he did his writing, he put a red X over that day. And after a few days, you have a chain, and you'll start to enjoy seeing that chain after a few weeks. Then your job becomes not breaking that chain. On to number four, celebrate your wins. I mean, what's the point of tracking things if you don't really notice it anyway? The more you experience a sense of progress, the more productive you become, and this can have long-term effects on goal attainment. But most of us don't count the small wins because we don't come up with a way to actually do that. It may be as little as a small celebration emoji on your phone that throws confetti on the screen. Uh, if you do a week of daily walks, maybe you reward yourself with some restaurant takeout. You'll go farther with incentives that you make for the progress that you've made. Number five, find an accountability partner. There will be days early on where you don't want to do the thing that you said that you wanted to do. Having someone you trust with similar goals to check in on you is huge. I've been meeting with my dad for workouts three days a week. We make the plans, and we don't want to let each other down by not showing up. One or both of us might fall off the wagon eventually if the other weren't there to present that sense of accountability. On to number six, show yourself some grace. I mean, we've all fallen off track with our goals in the past. You have a couple of good weeks and then something happens to throw you off. What's wrong with this, huh? Now you'll never reach your goal, right? Wrong. Stop beating yourself up. You're human after all. Because you've kept track, you can see your gains and that you're not back at square one. Take the chance to learn from your slip up, adjust your goals to make them more realistic if you need to, and just get back on that horse. A great way to think about this is to imagine a starting line. You know, none of us really want to walk all the way back to the starting line with our goals after we fall off track because it seems so far uh, away. But imagine yourself instead just picking up the starting line and bringing it with you. You don't have to make the sad walk to the beginning because you've already run part of the race. You'll be starting back where you left off continuing on your path to your goals with not nearly as far to go in the future. Now, there's always some danger with continuing to chase big, elusive dreams of an imaginary future. So I have one last thing to keep in mind as you work towards your goals and track your progress. This is one of the five tenets of the Wabi Sabi philosophy. Your happiness and well-being have nothing to do with how well you're doing, how far into the journey you've crossed, or what's coming next. Your happiness and well-being have everything to do with how present, accepting, and content you are with all that is. Measuring your progress is important to stay on track with your goals, but finding ways to enjoy and celebrate where you are in your journey, that's more important because that's where we grow and mold our lives one day at a time. That's what I've got for you today. Make sure you check out the show notes for helpful links, and if you enjoyed what you heard, make sure you hit subscribe and leave us a five-star review. I'd love to hear what you thought of the show. And, you know, hey, if you're interested in passive income opportunities with Tax Advantage Real Estate, I'd love to hear from you. So visit my website at www.oncallinvestments.com or reach out to me on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. I'm all over the place. Until next time, be safe and take care of each other out there. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. If you haven't already subscribed and reviewed the show, I'd be honored if you took the extra time. It really helps to expand our reach and get the word out about the show. If you're a CRNA who is interested in sharing your story on our podcast, I'd love to have you. Please email me at bobby at oncallinvestments.com for more information. This episode was brought to you by On Call Capital. They are dedicated to helping providers like you develop passive income and generational wealth through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. Feel free to check out their website at www.oncallinvestments.com and subscribe to their free educational email series. You can find On Call Capital on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also check out our YouTube page where you'll find all of the show episodes along with other educational videos. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.